social media impacts our well being mentally, physically, and emotionally. There is a power in having a mindfulness and self awareness practice as it allows us to meet each ebb and flow of life with curiosity instead of resistance. And my invitation for you today is to engage with social media in a more mindful and intentional way. We've all been through extraordinary challenges during this pandemic, both individually and collectively. And there is an urgent call for us to reduce the stigma around mental health struggles that commonly prevent people from seeking the help they need. We are all trying to make meaning of these uncertainties and life challenges, but as we come out of the fog, let us give each other permission, permission to ask for help and permission to remove the barriers and to combat the pull of toxic positivity. Resilience is not about fake or forced positivity and it is absolutely okay to not be okay and to seek the help that you need. And of course, there's no shortage of these perfectly curated images and stories on social media of people hashtag doing all the things and being all the things. And so it's timely for us to have a discussion about how social media impacts our well being. And our awareness is that first step toward that change. So let us be the ones to answer the call to truly affirm that mental health is health. As an educator, as a leadership coach, and a mindfulness teacher, and a self-proclaimed resilient warrior of life, my personal mission is to encourage others to realize and celebrate their own potential within, and to increase their leadership capacity through focused awareness. Currently, I serve as the director of the Sage Scholars Program at UC Irvine, and my overall approach to teaching and learning is rooted in a strength-based leadership philosophy. And I have infused mindfulness into the curriculum, into our classroom, our coaching sessions, because I believe mindfulness and self-awareness are essential life skills. They allow us to access different tools from our toolbox at different times to meet whatever situation is unfolding before us. For me, mindfulness and meditation created powerful shifts in my own perspective and in my own life especially as I overcame a variety of adversities, whether it was an illness, chronic pain management, um, even a career change. It's really any of the surprises that life throws at us, and it's usually when our guard is down. Um, but mindfulness allowed me to tap into my strengths and develop a growth mindset. Of course, I realize now that that mindset has become my superpower and that gratitude, resilience, and grit are part of my journey. I've noticed that when I'm grounded, present, and connected to myself, it's a little easier to navigate that scary unknown because it ultimately, I'm operating from my own truth. And I have to say that I've been meditating for almost 30 years and I will still try to approach every meditation with a beginner's mind. I truly appreciate the invitation to be fully engaged, fully alive and present um, so that I can reflect on what I'm learning and discovering about myself and others as I grow. The power in having a mindfulness practice is truly because you do get to meet these ebbs and flows and not allow yourself to get thrown off your foundation. And while mindfulness is a form of meditation there is no one way to meditate. There are endless ways that you can find a practice that works for you. And I do, I encourage you to find that, whether it's formal or informal, to find what resonates and works for you. During grad school, I had the good fortune to take a course in leadership and mindfulness with Dr. Zachary Green. And this took to a whole new level, my love for strength-based leadership, the love I have for leadership development and self-discovery and self-empowerment along with mindfulness and embodying that growth mindset. It was such a profound experience that it gave me the gift to be able to tap into my own heart, that very core of my core. And that allowed me to be able to live out loud and on purpose. It led me to figuring out my why. I understood that my purpose was to elevate others and help them shine, to be able to tap into their potential so they can design a life they themselves deem worthy of living. Being empowered to be vulnerable through radical transparency and compassion, because at the end of the day, knowing your why will get you through those hard days. 
I try to ground my own practice in love, understanding, compassion, and forgiveness. And not just of others, but myself too. And I'm not going to lie. Anytime that you turn any of those things inward towards yourself, it can be very challenging. It's so much easier to just give to others and be kind to others. Certainly I can find myself, I'm able to be kind to others and give, but as soon as I turn that inward, wow, I'm not so good at being kind to myself. So when we think about that, it is a practice, right? And social media, while there are so many positives to social media because we're able to stay connected with our loved ones, we build community and we celebrate milestones, there is an abundant amount of research that reports on the negative impacts of social media engagement as it relates to the onsets of depression, anxiety, distorted body image and self-esteem, and even a sense of loneliness and despair. So I ask you to take a moment and just reflect for yourself. Have you been on at least one of these apps or on your social media accounts, your favorite one in the last 24 hours? How about in the last two hours? Uh, how about, and in the last few minutes as you've been listening, of course, this is the judgment-free zone and I'm not here to judge, but just really rather to point out that the reality is that technology and social media are embedded in our daily lives. So it's very important to reflect on how it is impacting you. Again, my invitation for you is to engage with social media to that mindfulness and see how it's really taking up your time to be more intentional with your time and ask yourself, what is it taking away from you? Take time to think, is it taking time for things that you enjoy doing? Are there things that you could be doing on your to-do list that you're not doing? So just think about it, no judgment, only to be able to reflect for yourself. And remember, as you engage with technology, social media algorithms are designed to be addictive. They are designed to keep you hooked and scrolling. This is how it works. And when you realize that, you can actually take that step back. And perhaps I've always been cautious of my engagement with social media, and that had a lot to do with the research that I was involved in during my undergraduate years at UC Irvine. I had the privilege of working in the hardiness lab with Dr. Salvatore Matti, and he had paired me with a PhD candidate who was doing research on the effects of Facebook. Well, we were conducting surveys and interviews, and you know, when we did, the results came in, and across the board, people reported a dip, a really significant dip in their self-esteem, in their life satisfaction, and in their mood. And this was only after 15 minutes of engagement. Unfortunately, that dip goes deeper and deeper the longer you stay engaged on the app. So sometimes we don't realize the impact of these perfectly curated stories, but it absolutely does impact, right? It impacts your identity or even loss of identity, our self image and body image. We begin to compare. And there's a wonderful quote that says, comparison is the thief of joy. So please be careful what you're comparing yourself and your life to. So how do we take back control? Are you willing to take a step back to notice its effects on your life, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent? Taking back control doesn't mean going completely off the grid, right? I used to have Facebook, I used to have Instagram, but after a while I realized it wasn't, I wasn't engaging in a very healthy way, so I had to take that step back. And of course it was an absolute choice to disconnect. For me, it was a willingness to be uncomfortable with missing out. You know, that fear of missing out, that FOMO is very real. And in the beginning, initially, I definitely felt like I was missing out. I missed birthdays and other important events that were only posted through Facebook. But when I realized, it forced me to take a look and see, well, how am I engaging with these relationships? And it forced me to make an extra effort to stay connected with loved ones in other meaningful ways. Of course, I don't believe that there is a prescriptive one-size-fits-all remedy. You are the only one who can be aware, be honest, and be real with how you feel. So recognizing that your thoughts have power and they have consequences and realizing that these thoughts actually create our reality, I want you to start small. Just set simple goals. 
slow down, notice, and then make a change. Your thoughts don't control you, you control your thoughts. And this is all about taking back that control. Mental health is just as important as our physical health. We often go to the gym and we strength train our muscles and we wanna have a healthy lifestyle, but mental health is no different. And mindful meditation is a wonderful tool to meet the present moment. It allows you to use observation, simple observation as your practice. And so today I would like to share with you just a simple practice that you could literally do anytime, anywhere, and that's the power of the pause. Simply pause. And you can remember it with a simple acronym to just stop, right? Stop, slow down or stop, either way. Then what you get to do is take a breath, take a nice, deep, diaphragmatic breath that gives lungs power, right? And then you get to observe. A lot of times we feel our emotions in our body, but we don't bring awareness to that. So as you slow down, you take the breath and you observe, what is your body communicating to you? What are your emotions trying to communicate to you? And then finally, you get to proceed. You get to proceed with choice. This is a very empowering thing, right? Because you took that moment to pause and breathe, now you're empowered to respond instead of react. And this gives us the power to just notice and choose, right? Self-awareness allows us to notice our triggers. Then you get to choose how to best respond, right? You continue to build your own emotional capacity over time. You're able to recognize and manage your reactivity, reappraise stress and self-doubt. You cultivate your own creativity and increase resilience and your authenticity. As I said before, meditation does not have to be formal or intimidating. So you could actually start quite small, right? Set yourself up for success and then see what resonates for you. You certainly don't need to spend hours on end trying to meditate and clear your mind. Simply start with these micro meditations, a little bit of time, few times throughout the day. Could be as simple as finding your breath and noticing your breath. A lot of people enjoy pausing for daily gratitude. Um, if you enjoy journaling, some people don't, but if you do, having a reflective journal that you can just go back and write in, even walking could be a mindful activity, taking notice of the colors, the scents, the sounds, just a moment for you to be fully present. I particularly enjoy the red light example. So whether you're in the car, on a bus, on your bike, or just walking, anytime you come at a red light. I want you to pause and just take three deep belly breaths, right? Make sure that even the bottom of your lungs are getting that air. So it's not just up here in your chest. And when you do, you're fully engaging your lungs. It's funny because sometimes when I'm on autopilot and just going throughout my day, I don't even realize how long I've gone without just taking a nice deep breath just to recenter myself. So mindfulness is simply bringing awareness to this present moment and paying attention on purpose. And what else? Without judgment, right? So ultimately, finding what feels good for you will take some time, but I encourage you to find what works for you. And remember, change is hard. It takes time, so be patient with yourself. And remember, boundaries begin with us. We are the ones who set the limits on what we will accept. So as you go to take back control, Remember those settings, they are your best friend. Be sure to use the settings so that it can help you to set those boundaries. You're gonna be selective in what comes across your feed. Take notice of what you're consuming. As you consume this endless scroll, take a moment. Right, is it serving you? Is it adding value to your life? You can also turn off notifications so you're not constantly getting pinged as reminders to get on your social media, right? You can set time limits, engage, get in, and then get back out. You don't have to be on there. So you can actually say, I'm going to do this for 30 minutes. I'm going to be on here for 45 minutes, and then you can get back out. It's just a simple shift in perspective so that you can remind yourself that you have a choice. And to simply put it, you can be that positive change, and you can model the way of healthy online engagement. Um, one of the things I personally miss the most during the pandemic is live music. 
And I could hang on to the joy and energy of my experience days after it was over, just reliving the experience, the sounds, the scents, the smells. But I noticed more and more that there would be this sea of endless phones recording the show or whatever the event might be. And you watch people watching the show through their phone as they're posting on social media. So I encourage you to just put your phone away, enjoy the details, because when you are fully present, you actually store stronger memories of these significant moments in your life. You can actually store memories of joy so that you can relive it when you are having a hard day. My ask of you today is to just disconnect from technology from time to time. It doesn't have to be so prescriptive, like we said. It's not about taking back um, that, that time, right? It's just for you to be able to set those boundaries and just disconnect so that you can have your experience of life more fully. And just think, if I had to say, what's your call to action today, is to take one small action one small change, one new boundary that you could commit to implementing today. And just remember, remember the power you hold and how much value you add to this space and every other space that you occupy. My hope and intention is that you'll take the time to do this work, to be able to decide who you will be and what you will model for others in the coming days, months, and years. And just to imagine, Imagine the possibilities of the positive ripple effects if you answer the call to live out loud and on purpose. Thank you.